Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we will be discussing the application of various capital budgeting techniques with Excel. So let's begin with the concept of present value. Now, what is this concept of present value? What is a present value? So let's say there is uh, an amount 10 rupees which you will receive next year. So the value of that 10 rupees will be a little less as of today, right? Something which you will be receiving one year down the line, the value of that cash flow will be a little less as compared to that amount as of today, right? Why? Because of the simple reason of time value of money. All right. So let's find out the present value of this future amount as of today. So let's do this question first. The question is, how much would INR 6 million due in five years? So this 6 million you will receive in five years be worth today if the discount rate was 10%. So let's write down the parameters that we have. We have the future value as 6 million time we have five years and the rate the discount rate we have 10 percent all right so for the formula i need these three components now what is the formula of present value how do i compute this present value so we have a function known as pv so is equal to PV, open up the bracket. It will first ask you for the rate. Rate is 10% here. All right, so I link it to 10%. Number of periods. So it's five years. So I will link this to five. Payment. There is no regular payment amount. So I will leave it as it is. Future value. So I have a future value, which is 6 million. So I will put a minus sign and then enter this future value. All right, that's it. So it says the future value of 6 million, which I will receive in five years is worth 3.72 million as of today's date. All right. So this is how you find out the present value of a future amount. All right. So let's reverse the scenario now. I hope this present value concept is clear. Let's just reverse the scenario and find out what is the future value of the present amount that you are planning to invest. All right. So the question is, what will be the future value of rupees 10,000 invested today at a rate of 5% per annum for three years. All right. So what are the parameters that we have? We have a present value 10,000. We have time uh, three years and we have the rate as 5%. All right. So these are the parameters that we have in the question. We need to find out the future value. All right. We need to find out the future value. How will we do that? So for finding out the future value, we have a FV function, the future value. It is absolutely the same as present value. Instead of future value in the formula, we are replacing it with present value. Right? So it will ask you for a rate. The rate is 5%. Number of periods, three years. There is no payment. Leave it and minus this present value. All right. So this 10,000, if you invest it today at a rate of 5% for three years, so after three years, this amount will become 11,576. All right. So these are the very, very important computations that one should be, uh, you know, having an understanding of because it will help you in your daily life as well. 
right? To uh, when you are planning your investments, when you are uh, looking at okay, if you invest this amount today, what will be it worth? Or if you want uh, this amount three years down the line, then how much should you invest? Invest, right? So it will help you with these parameters. So I hope present value and future value concepts are absolutely clear. I will be now moving on to a very very important aspect of capital budgeting known as net present value. Now let me take you back to your academic days. Remember when you first studied this capital budgeting techniques NPV. There we said okay there are two mutually exclusive projects that we have right and we have to invest in one of them right so so in fact what is the net present value right so net present value is basically the present value of your inflows less the present value of your outflows right why don't ask me why do we do the present value guys time value of money right that's the bible just remember that all right so net npv so uh, 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 continuing further right so we have two mutually exclusive projects project a and project b and we have a series of cash flows on specific dates right and we just have to find out the npv of both of these projects right the discount rate is 10% it's given in the question now what is the selection criteria for npv when we are talking about mutually exclusive projects we select the project which has a higher npv right we select the project which has a higher npv so let me just compare the npv of both these projects project a and project b now what was the lendier method the lendier method was to first find out what are the present value factors at 10% right and then you multiply the cash flows with the respective present value factors right that's what you uh, uh, were doing right now we will not follow this longer approach lengthier method we will do everything within seconds we have excel for that right so we have a function known as npv it will ask you for a rate 10% and it will ask you for the values now when you are applying this npv you have to select the positive values right when you are applying this npv you have to select the positive values and then you have to subtract the outflows why have i taken plus here because the number is already in negative right so i get an npv of 61 Five seven four project A. Let me check this for project B is equal to NPV at a rate of ten percent and the positive values minus the negative number. So I have the value of six two seven four. Now what project will you invest in? So you infer from this. that you will select project b since it has higher npv all right now this is one concept npv net present value i hope this thing is clear now guys understand something this npv will only and only work when you have regular cash flows right that means year 0 year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 year 5 year 6 year 7 so on right so this formula will work only when you have a series of recurring cash flows at regular intervals consider the next case same projects but notice something in the num in the years so we have 2020 outflow 2021 inflow 22 inflow there is no inflow in 23 and we have an inflow in 24 again 25 is there 26 is not there and 27 is there right so what to do now if i now apply 
simple NPV here, the result will be incorrect. Why? Because there are no series of cash flows here. Right? If it is year 1, 2, there is no year 3. There is year 4. But if I apply NPV, what am I saying? I am saying year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, year 5, year 6, year 7. Right? So, if I have some irregular cash flows, I cannot apply a normal NPV function. Then what is the, uh, the alternative to that? We have an XNPV function. Right? We have an XNPV. This is a very simple and very powerful method. So, XNPV, it will ask you for rate 10%. It will ask you for values. Now, in this XNPV, you will select all the values. Even on even the negative one. Why? Because XNPV says, I will start my computation as of today. So, if you're making some outflows, that also will get inbuilt. And then notice the difference. It will ask you for dates. Now here you can specify these dates. And that's it. Rest everything Excel will take care. Now see and compare the result with above. In the normal if the series were regular you had 6157 of an NPV. But if the series are not regular, right, you, the NPV is 4717. Apply it for project B also. XNPV, rate 10%, values, select all these values, and dates, you select all these dates. And that's it. 4830, 4831, right? So that is how you apply NPV and XNPV. All right, let's move on to IRR and XIRR computation. Again, the logic is simple. IRR takes into consideration equal intervals, whereas XIRR will take into consideration the varying time frames as well. So the formula is very simple. Is equal to IRR, just select the values and you are sorted. IRR, just so select the values and you are sorted. Similarly, XIRR values, comma dates, that's it. XIRR values, comma dates, that's it. All right, so that's how you apply IRR and XIRR functions. Moving on to another technique, payback period. Now, what is a payback period? Now, payback period is the time when you recover your invested amount. So, for example, compute the payback period of the following investment. So, the amount invested is 10,000 uh, 10, rupees. So this says in year zero, if you invest 10,000 and if you have these cash flows, then it, in what year, in what time frame will you recover your money back? Right? So how do we do that? First, we find out the cumulative cash flows. So in year one, it will be plus 10,000, uh, minus 10,000 plus 2,000 we have recovered. So, the amount to be recovered is 8,000. Then, in year 2, 5,000 left to be recovered. Year 3, 1,500 left to be recovered. Now, consider this. In year 3, we have only 1,500 to be recovered. But, what is the cash flow for year 4? 4,000. That means, that means, we will be receiving, our, we will be recovering our invested amount between three and four years, right? So how do we do that? So how do we find out the payback period? It says, of course, three years plus three plus, what is the amount to be recovered? 
1500 divided by how much is the cash flow so this will give you 3.38 right so in 3.38 years you will recover your cash flow back you will recover your invested amount back all right so we have done present value we have done future value we have covered npv xnpv functions we have also covered irr which is the internal rate of return and now don't ask me what is irr guys it's very basic i expect you to know this irr is that rate which will at which the npv is zero all right so if the irr is more than the cost of capital it's good we have read it in academic days remember if it is less than the uh, cost of capital we won't be uh, appreciating that project all right so we've covered irr and xirr we have also seen how do we actually compute the payback period that's it in the capital budgeting session guys i hope the concepts and the application of the concepts is clear all right i wish you all the very best you have this file as a practice file please practice and then only move ahead